<laughs> Michael Tall, Jack Armstrong, Kevin Palmer, hey. and special guest Miller Ford. We got What's Miller up, Ford guys? for a couple minutes this week. We got him uh, lined up for the second week of Kill Tony interviews. He just went on. He's got a little bit of lore to him. We're going to get into that. Let's do it. <laughs> welcome, welcome, man. There we go. We just pulled him up right now. We got you on the screen. How you feeling, Miller Ford? It's so good to have you with us. We saw you on Kill Tony last week, and you had a great set. Actually, it wasn't the best set. I'll be totally honest. But the interview was nice. You seem like a really lovable type of dude. You're out there in Aspen, Colorado. How you feeling today, man? I'm good, man. I'm happy I could jump on with you guys. Yeah, absolutely uh, thrilled. Working right now, but uh, I got a, I got one of my employees to come in and help well, out. So. Wait, are you at Pussyfoot Steve's right now? Are you at Pussyfoot <laughs> Steve's right now? Are you really? You did, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. All yeah. oh, right, yeah, because I heard, I remember from you. your interview. Did I say that right? Is it Pussyfoot Steve's? Steeps. It's, it's it's Pussyfoot Steeps. It's like named after ski runs here. But like the crazy shit is, is uh, after that uh, interview on Kill Tony, uh, like people left like trolling reviews. Oh no, uh, not oh. not a ton, but. It was funny. They, they were actually kind of funny. Man, I'm surprised lie. you didn't get fired. They're like, this is all your fault, Miller. <laughs> Damn you, Miller. No, I, my buddy owns the place, and so like we're good friends, and so he got a kick out of it, too. Hell yeah, that's cool. Is it a nice restaurant, though, for real? It's like a local's joint, man. It's like a sports bar, like hangout, which the Aspen, if you're even closely familiar with it, like is not like a, a kind of a dive bar type place. This place is like kind of bringing back some of the old vibes that Aspen used to have. Well, I hear you got a lot of those trickle down economics. That's what I hear. At Aspen, Colorado. <laughs> I can't that shit, dude. I can't repeat that. I'm so nervous. I said that like two times. <laughs> so, two or three. Like yeah, what, what exactly did you mean by that? Does that just mean they pay you well because uh, they yeah, make dude, a lot of money? Yeah, the one percent. Yeah, the, because you know this is like the playground of the elite. And so they come here and like it, it literally, we get it and then we pass it along. And so it's nice. And no matter where you're at in Aspen, uh, you're probably getting a decent paycheck. Nice. I might, I might move out. I mean, who knows? That sounds like a nice spot. I don't ski like you. I don't ski like you. I don't snowboard either. But uh, real quick, I had a question. What's with your name? What, what is your name? Dude, that's a good question. Uh, (laughs) I go by Miller Ford. But the reason why I go by Miller Ford is because I got a fucked up name. It's Eliphalet Miller Ford the Fourth. His name is Eliphalet. I'm like, it's like Elefante yeah. or something like that. It's something real exotic. But that's cool. I like Eliphalet. Eliphalet. Spell it. I like that you call it exotic, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's E L I P H A L E T. Eliphalet. Yeah, dude. It's a phonetic mess. That's got to be biblical. Uh, it's got to be biblical or something. You nailed, you nailed it. Dude. It is? Okay. It's, 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 it's How like does it, Old Testament. It, dude, yeah, it does remind me of like the book of Ephesians. Uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, Ezekiel, maybe. Yes. We went to Christian yeah. school, man. Yeah, we oh, did. You do, buddy. You're getting close, dude. You're all around it. It's Second Samuel. Oh, <laughs> shit. Very nice. Where, where they're just like listing off names. It's just like all that whole chapter, <laughs> that whole chapter is just like names. So I think somebody threw a dart on a page <laughs> back like four generations ago. And uh, I mean, it was, I got that name when people were being named Ebenezer. Yeah. Because I can't I'm get wrong with the Old Testament stuff. names. Those Old Testament names are so fire. They really are. <laughs> I mean, right, try Jack? going by a life of it, though, dude. That's not an easy thing to introduce yourself as. Yeah. It's like, yep. so I guess you're kind of Miller's stifled. like the middle name or something. Yeah. Miller's the middle name. So it's just like, girl, I grew up in Alabama. So it's like, you can't go walking around with a name like uh, Eli Follett and not get uh, bullied constantly. Yeah. So Miller Miller got me the leeway of just being kind of like the normal white dude name. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over a little recap of your Kill Tony set. I felt like Tony was super mean to you the whole time, which he always is. Right. Kind of pissed me off a little bit because you seem like a really nice guy. Uh, you said you've been doing stand-up for about three and a half years, and they really – took offense to that and i love how you just went uh oops <laughs> it seemed like you were totally immune to their criticism which i love because tony can be such a Appreciate bully it. sometimes and it really like it didn't affect you at all and that's hard to uh that's hard to fake so i bet you know you got a good um what's the word you just got good uh self-esteem that's what it seems like so that that's nice did you feel like tony was being mean you. to you you know i watched the show enough man that like it, i 
in the, in the moment, I was just like, let's go. Like, you're going to be saying some weird shit. And, yeah. Uh, if you watch like, the show enough, and, yeah, you kind of go into it knowing. Like, and I was like, okay. But in hindsight, like, when I watched my episode, I was like, oh, Tony was in a bad fucking mood that show. <laughs> and so, because you, if you watch the show enough, you see the dynamic of, like, when he's well-rested and in a good mood, he's like, People come up and Bob, and he's still kind of nice to him. Yeah, and uh, and then, but like on that show when I watched it, I was like, oh shit, I'm happy I stayed above water. Yeah, because I had no idea that that that, that was the context before. You know, you have you're basically just pulled off the street, and thrown on stage. It's awesome. Yeah, and you have no uh, handicaps at all. So he, you know, he normally likes those types of people. So <laughs> you really had nothing going for you. He had nothing absolutely going for you. But you did say you look like Matthew McConaughey with Down syndrome. Your eyes look a little close together, but it's not that bad, bro. It's not that bad. <laughs> that joke usually, I mean, the funny part was, it's like, yeah, I came up there with my minute. I'm happy I had it like all, ver like, you know, I had my punches out. I wasn't like ill prepared, but I had been down there in Austin, like doing open mics for a solid three weeks. Like, you know, I, I was doing like three a night, two a night. And I had tried, I'd done those jokes here where I live a decent amount and they got laughs. And then I, I was running them in front of the co comics down there and it, it got the laughs. And so when it fell flat, I was like, oh shit, I just got to keep going. I was happy I got a laugh on one punch. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Well, yeah, your, um, your uh, age gap joke did make me laugh <laughs> because the middle school uh, part of it was a good misdirection. I didn't really see that coming. So that did make me laugh. That did. <laughs> And, and you said joke, you were you were joke. in Austin for an entire month doing open mics. Did you get many yeah. laughs the entire month, or was it just uh, crickets the whole time? <laughs> oh no, man! I tell you, it's cool because it's like down there with the open mics. Um, most of them you're doing it in front of like thirty other comics. It's not like uh, we're here when I do an open mic up in here in the where I live in, near Aspen and such so so on and so forth. But it. Uh, like there's people there, there's like regular civilians, but what, down there in Austin, it's like just 30 comics. And if you get like a good chuckle or like somebody lifts their head up from their joke book and is like, and, like, really? and gives a nod, you like, that's the, that's the, the round of applause that you're looking for in a room wow. full of comics. Yeah. I, I get yeah. that too. Cause we have a big hip hop scene, uh, in our city. And the shows always seem like rappers performing for other rappers. So yeah. that kind of reminds me uh, of our little scene we got going on here. Dude, so you get it. It's like the the people that are in the game like are the are pretty critical. They're also focused on their own game, but they respect game. So you would you, know, you wouldn't like, consider moving to Austin from Aspen? Oh man, uh, <laughs> not, unless I won some fucking large sum of money. Because <laughs> you really like, like Aspen and you're putting on a good uh plug for aspen right now yeah the trickle down economics in austin aren't quite as good as it, I, I, oh, yeah, he lived austin, in austin. <laughs> I liked austin and it was uh, for what i went down there for to do like i i was down there for uh I, I i was active 20 days of the 31 days i was down there like and i did 34 open mics wow that's and awesome, so dude. and so that was the whole purpose of me going down there was to just do a fuck ton of reps and just come back up here to my audience with like a whole brand, a brand new way of writing a whole new perspective on like telling jokes period. And it worked. Yeah. I mean, it you're a kill Tony bucket pool now. That's actually a big deal in this, in the comedy scene. Like that automatically puts you higher than a lot of traveling comics. It seems like to me, but I, I don't know as much as you do probably, but you know, to, you know, to, to the fans, it's like being a kill Tony bucket pool really puts you kind of higher on the list. I, I would say that you're right. Uh, I mean, it definitely helps when your set is better than what mine was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interview but, uh, is, is, is a bigger deal than the set. People forget about that set so, so quick. So what's the best fucking, uh, item on Pussyfoot's menu? Pussyfoot? What, pardon me? Uh, uh, what was that? The best, uh, appetizer, best entree and best, <laughs> Uh, mixed drink at Pussyfoot's. <laughs> oh, dude, um, it's a vodka soda for mixed drink. Is definitely the best mixed drink. Can't go wrong. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 we got, and then uh, we got like killer. Uh, our burger is killer. I got and the then, menu. Uh, we, Man, this place is basic. This these... place is basic as fuck. <laughs> Burgers. Nah, and... dude. 
Yeah, like like this burger is different, dude. Um, but th- I mean, we're like a regular local bar. It's like we don't want to keep any kind of like pretension on it. And uh, but do, I, what, do you feel uh, what tattooed I go to it after you eat there? Do you feel tattooed What's after that? you eat there? Because you said you felt tattooed <laughs> after you ate it. Maybe Bell. a little pale inside. <laughs> dude, thank you for that callback. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. Dude, I, love, I like that joke, too. Went over his head, it, man. It made me laugh w- when I heard it, but then the more I think about it, I don't really understand it, but the absurdity <laughs> of it is funny. It's like I, I, I make the correlation that like Pete Davidson looks like how Taco Bell makes me feel after I eat it. I, 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 I agree that with joke. that. I agree with that. <laughs> I, I, I do too. That's the one that made me chuckle the most. And I was like, I'm imagining Pete Davidson's dumb, like kind of like swollen lips, sunken eyes, face. He looks miserable. But the only question is, why does it make him feel, you feel tattooed as well? And tattooed and pale of this type? Is that if I eat Taco Bell, I feel like a redneck that like yeah. lives in the trailer park. Yeah, you got something against and, tattoos? Oh, you, dude, you got the tattoos. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. But you're, but, like, I work at a shop. But you oh, look Pierce. healthy. You look healthy, dude. I'm strong. You guys look healthy. He's getting there. Dude, I'm I was accurate. watching some of y'all's clips, man. You guys are funny as shit. Oh, thanks. Thank you, dude. We right, just man. do this as like a time capsule. We're just old friends because sometimes it feels like you're just chipping oh, away. Oh, I picked up on that shit, dude. I picked up <laughs> on you guys knew each other. And I was worried when I watched you guys that like, since there's four white guys that like we're gonna trigger forty percent of the population <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're gonna think we're gonna think we're having some kind of rally. Yeah, we're, we're, we're kicking off white boy summer the right way, boys. Let's you watch the debate or what, brother? <laughs> I think I pissed off my co-anchors here when I said that uh, it's just for fun. It's not for fun. We're super serious about this. Oh no, no, this. I was just about to agree with you. Yeah, this is basically a time capsule for us, you know, just to watch as old men. And now we got Dude, Miller Ford on here. Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, that if it's fun, that's why. I mean, that's the whole point of shit, isn't it? I mean, it's like that's why I do comedy. Yeah, it's like I, I, you know, when I we went over, I talked a little bit about it in the interview with Tony, but like uh, when I first sobered up like eight years ago, comedy just landed in my lap, and uh, I was like, wow, this is a nice gift, and I never took it for anything but that. And I mean, I do work like to make the gift better but uh i've never treated it anything other than like a gift that i can make grow and it's been cool as shit because of that yeah that's so really refreshing fun. and it's a good yeah. segue into a couple of other questions so right. who were some of your early comic influences or maybe you weren't really into it till after you got sober but did you have any like famous or uh, favorite oh. comedy movies growing up or anything like that famous favorite comics oh for sure dude um, for me, it was all, I was always drawn to comedy because I was like a nerdy kid that played magic and fucking like got wow. beat up down. These in guys Alabama. love playing magic. Just so you know, these two over here, they oh. love playing magic. We pulled a one ring two weeks ago on the show. <laughs> what? Fuck, Just dude. the regular Shut one, not the crazy one. What? <laughs> yeah. Off the new, off the new expansion day. Wow. He knows what you're talking about. Some Lord of the Rings stuff. It is relatively yeah. <laughs> new. Yeah. It was the second one of the so uh, universe. So, so, I'm a jock. Thing, I'm a jock that, over here. So. But that I thought there was only one of those. So you have like a million dollar card? <laughs> no, no, no. So there's a bunch of one rings and there's like the regular one. Then there's like a foil version of that. Then there's a secret layer and then there's Post Malone's card. Yeah, they really. Mean, they uh, mean, the one that Post Malone got's written in like the El- Elvish and language. Dark speak. <laughs> Black speak, they call it. <laughs> Do they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah Lord yeah. of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. But you were a nerd. You were playing magic. So who sorry. did you like uh, growing yeah, no, up? Dude, sorry. I was, so I was like this dirty. Uh, sorry, I got off of No, you're good. I like that. I, we do that. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> I like, that's why I like you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I was like a dirty kid, and I was always drawn to like comedy. And then r- right around that same time is when uh, Deaf Comedy Jam on HBO was wow. like hot. So and you like the Dave Chappelle fucking, and shit? Dude, it was all the greats, you know, Bernie of Mac. that era. <laughs> it was Bernie? like Jamie Foxx, C- Cedric Entertainer, uh, Bernie Mac, like all these dudes. And some dudes you never see again, but uh, I would like, wa- I would watch that religiously like every Saturday, or it was, came on on Friday nights and I would be like in front of the TV waiting for Def Comedy Jam for that 30 minutes. That was just, amazing. Like, well, that since was and, this is all four white people, we we're really hoping you'd say the blue collar comedy tour. <laughs> but we, we will accept that answer. <laughs> the real kings dude. of comedy, as we call it at this table. The real kings. Of uh, get her done, dude. That's funny that you say that because uh, 
one of the things that happened when I got pulled, so you get pulled and run across the street. I'm sure you guys have heard all this shit. And uh, I'm standing there backstage after the nice production uh, assistants like gives me a little pep talk. And I'm standing there kind of reciting my minute. And up the stairs, there's a set of stairs. Up the stairs, here comes Ron White. Whoa. And like, if I wasn't already shook, yeah. I was like, that fucking put me in a different stratosphere. I was like, what the huh. fuck is my life right now? Yeah, this yeah. is fucking you, I mean, as soon as you see that white, long, silky hair, I mean, I would just be yeah. floored. I'd be floored at that point. I imagine him my walking only, down the stairs with a drinking hand and a cigar. He's sober now, dude. Oh, wow. My oh, only yeah. reaction was I saw him coming up the stairs and I just said, hey, Mr. White. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like Jesse Pinkman from like Breaking he, Bad. <laughs> yeah. Mr. White. <laughs> And that's all I had. Like he's your and principal. Like, he was backstage. He never came on stage, though. It's a powerful presence. All right. So, yeah, let's, let's get into the actual Kill Tony experience. So you went to the uh, bar across the street, I guess, and you hung out there until your name got called. What was that like for you? It was cool, man, because, like, I had been down there for uh, two – I'd already been there for two weeks, so this was the third week, and he was over there doing those arena shows. So oh, yeah. you, the availability to sign up hadn't happened for me yet. And, uh, and so I knew I had two times to sign up. And so I'd made a lot of good friends there that were beating the streets like me, a bunch of o other open micers. And so it was kind of cool because it was like one, the first time that I got to like really hang out with them whenever we weren't like trying to get on stage. And so we we're kind of shooting the shit a little more. There's a good vibe. It's like a campus type vibe. And, uh, and so I, I sign up, they make the people who, uh, haven't signed up before wait in one line so you can just sign a disclaimer oh, okay. and then the other folks, the other folks get to just go, go through. And, uh, I signed up and I had this, you know, it's funny that you brought up my name because I had this interaction with the lady who was the production. Uh, she was like the, uh, production director and, uh, she was like, Oh, what's that name? Let me see if I can pronounce it. And we had a good laugh about that. And then she took me over to where I finally signed the finished forms. And uh, and then the next thing I knew, like an hour later, I was on stage. Well, if you didn't put Miller, I would have never been able to search you up. So I'm so glad you put Miller. I, it, it, some of these names, because I'm always trying to DM kill Tony Bucket Pools, you know, the ones that I like. And uh, some of the names I just can't figure out because it's just verbal. You know what I mean? So I'm glad you went with the Miller. That, that was a smart idea. And, oh, uh, dude, I, I would never try to go by, as a stage name, my first name. That would, <laughs> I mean, that maybe, maybe one day. I don't know, dude. But. And I was wondering, what brought more attention to you, your DUI or your Kill Tony appearance? Oh, well, you know that DUI got busted down, too. How did you, man, you went deep, dog. Well, well you talked about it on the Kill Tony <laughs> show, and, dude, and we got, I, pull up the mugshot. Pull up the mugshot That quick. motherfucker is, uh, <laughs> That one was from when I was like 21. I'm 40. Look at that guy. Really? That's 21 year old. Look man? at that. No, that's me at 34, dude. That's okay. after a solid 12 years of just putting yeah, down. Some yeah, they booze. said you look like TJ Miller on the show, and you kind of do right there. You kind of look like TJ Miller. <laughs> Miller. Just kind of. <laughs> dude, that shit was wild. I mean, so uh, yeah, the, the, yeah the, that's did me. the viral DUI bring you more attention, or did the kill Tony? Appearance? I never got the, the. It's funny you bring that up because the DUI got bu busted down just for reckless driving, and that happened when I was twenty one during spring break. Hey, let this so that, I don't know how. You, so know what is it? What, what what arrest is this? What, what's the charge here? That that one that one <laughs> is the, the only one, one that's, oh, that's yeah. really. May I didn't get. Uh, uh, a, a, a DUI with this one. This was a cocaine charge. <laughs> okay, my bad. My yeah, bad. This was, this was. This was. I, there was no motor vehicle involved. I thought it was I, driving I under up. the influence of cocaine. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> Just pure collar no, shirt I, and cocaine. I hung up that hat of driving behind the wheel after I got that reckless driving at 21. I was like, this is for the birds. Um, uh, so <laughs> I, I was a good drunk. That was the only rule I never broke was I didn't drive because I was like, I don't want to fucking hurt anybody. Well, that's good. Good <laughs> that's man. Good. Good man. <laughs> and, and, and Honestly, it was pretty selfish, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> any regrets with uh, getting sober at all? Any regrets? Oh, no, dude. That shit, that was like the best segue into sober life, uh, that arrest, um, because it had a laugh attached to it. I mean, it didn't get a big laugh there um, at, at the audience that night, but when it went viral, 
back in 2015, um, a lot of people in Colorado and, and a lot of people in general got a laugh out of the line I said, which was, of course, of course it's <laughs> cocaine up my nose. It's acid. <laughs> yeah. Because like anybody who knows a little bit of Aspen knows that rich people and cocaine pair well together. And, and so it's no, like, no pun intended. That's a little on the nose. Like it's got snow in Aspen. You know, they call cocaine snow. It just seems so perfect. Yeah, and he said he doesn't like snowboarding. He loves skiing. He said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that another? Uh... Yeah, he said that on the show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was wild, man. It was like because overnight, like uh, I, that article got printed here, and then the, literally the next day it was in the New York Daily News, and then by the end of that week, I it was like uh, my buddy called me and was like, "I just heard your name. I was Howard Stern." Wow. Uh, I heard, and then like people in Florida were like, "You're on the tabloid show," <laughs> and then my friends from Holland fucking what? contacted me. And then my, they finally ended with my friend in Sydney sent me a picture of their like New York Daily News. Wow! And uh, with my with the article in it. Well, New York's and like then the it, news. Place. And so it, once the Associated Press picked it up, and there was like radio shows trying to call me to ask me to talk about it and shit. I was like, hell no! I haven't even gone to court, dude. Right? <laughs> like, it's too soon. What the fuck do you want me to this talk about? My this is all alleged. This is all alleged. Honestly, yeah, I got honestly the that sucks. Out. That sucks. You get arrested for cocaine, and then your mugshot is literally everywhere in the world. That sucks, dude, man. Dude, well, luckily, there's only certain outlets that print, produce that yeah. mugshot. But I look good now, so I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're doing good, man. Especially yeah. compared yeah. to the mugshot. <laughs> yeah, it's a good oh, segue. Dude, I had a quite, couple questions about your new deal. If it, I mean, this was in 2022. I had this article. I got uh, Ben's friends. Tell us about this. Oh, that was a uh, group of uh, like so. It was a. It's a group that's national that uh, uh, directly deals with people trying to or being sober in the restaurant industry. And oh, cool. uh, they came around for a large event that's called Food and Wine here in Aspen. And I, I approached, I came to one of their meetings and just chatted with them. And they're like, hey, would you start one here in Aspen? And I'm like, hell yeah. That's cool. Let's go. And uh, we had it here for a while. And uh, attendance is like really was dwindling. And, and so it kind of had to, they, but they're still very active in like Charleston, Seattle, Portland, uh, San Francisco. They've got large groups. But, you know, luckily there's other sober groups that people can fucking right. get into if they got to get their shit together. Yeah, being Which sober I on the being sober on the line is you got you need you yeah, need other in people. the kitchen that's tough. Yeah, I've, I've, oh, I've dude, worked once in you kitchens. get it down, it's not as hard as you would think, man. It's like once you got once you're done, you're kind of once you figure some shit out, it, it's like you kind of have a, a, a like a okay, I get it now moment. Like that was not working. That's so true. you can I bartend still, you know what I mean? I I'm constantly serving people drinks and like been sober for eight years that's a good way to is, make money be sober while you're bartending and then you don't spend it all on alcohol yeah, oh yeah don't get high on your own supply best dude. way to yep. save money is just to get sober it really is it really is oh dude i, I swear to god it's it's 20 grand a year i mean i was an alcohol i am an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was definitely like 20 grand a year that i was pumping down the the booze trade so it's been like three <laughs> weeks since you're on the show right it's been like- uh yeah i think it, no it's been a while so it was like Four weeks? When I got on the show, it was actually recorded on, like, uh, May 27th or because something. Because of the it arena was, shows, right? Yeah. Oh, yep, yep. Okay. And we actually had Tan Veer Aurora on the show last week. Did you run into Tan Veer at all? He was on the same episode, and he came on right before you. I didn't see him out there. I saw him get pulled. I didn't see him out there, and um, but I heard the reactions going I mean, he, he on he had the biggest backstage. if you look at the um the timeline of that kill tony episode his interview has the biggest bump he had a crazy <laughs> interview too but um another moment that i really liked in your interview is like i think tony was asking like what's the most interesting thing about you and you brought up your viral dui and you were just about to real quickly tell everyone it's how to D- search I, it I, up not I, a viral I, D- I, I don't know why i keep there. saying that i keep your, your viral it was mugshot. On a park bench. I, did, it was, I, I would be yourself. like a tempted murderer if Hell I was yeah. driving. Let me get my words straight. Your 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 viral mugshot, and you were about to just kind of real quickly tell the crowd like how they can search it, and then Tony's like, "No, shut the fuck up. Just tell us. Just tell us." And then Breadband pulls up the mugshot. 
because you you know you told everybody to look it up and it was like this great crowd reaction and everyone loved it but tony is such a power tripping douchebag sometimes and i just love how you kind of got the best of them that's how i felt at least what did i yeah i mean it's kill him with kindness man i was like nothing but grateful to be on there and also man i will say this about tony hinchcliffe when that was all going on and he was being you know in whatever kind of mood he was in uh there was a point in time that you can't really see on camera, but like, I don't know if he knew that I was like either, either who's like, you're doing good or like, you're good. Giving me some kind of like affirmation, but like he made this like direct eye contact with thing with me and then did the little tiny head nod. That wasn't like anything that it definitely felt like how, if you were playing a sport, like one of your teammates would give you like that little, like we we're going. Okay. Like so, on the same page kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, dude. And so when he did that, um, I think it was somewhere around that, around that same time. It really like was a cool moment. I won't forget. It was like, oh, cool. I get it. We're All just right, playing around here. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's a good go. insight. Good insight right there. Yeah, that's something that nobody, unless you're on stage, you would ever really. It's like kind of, and I'm sure that some of these. Let's be honest, some people don't get that. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying I'm special <laughs> or anything, but like I've I've seen the interviews, and there's some people he just demolishes that I would crawl in a hole and die. <laughs> they I, let it happen too because they don't have that some fire inside them. Mm. Like, and, and even Sam Talent, I feel like he bombed harder than you did yeah. in your set. Like all his jokes him. making fun of you were bad. And I like Sam Talent, <laughs> all right. He he's overrated a little bit, but. I feel like he was bombing with his insults on you. I really did. I, and, and, I did like the one where he was like, uh, where he said, like, I, you know, I've made up a girlfriend, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about that. How Has she done counting the owls? How many <laughs> owls can there be? What, so what's the count at today? What's the count? I, I mean, there's there's a decent amount of those sons of bitches <laughs> out there. Remember, he's it's an asshole. Because, <laughs> and their count, their count ah. owls are feet of mice. I, man, she loves her job, and I'm stoked for her. She's an is awesome girlfriend. Is she a, a, a ornithologist? Is that how you say that? Is that what she is? I like, yeah. Sam Pallet said that shit too. He's like, that's a really good, oh, yeah. that's a really good cover because you'd have to know a well known ornithologist. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that word. No way. <laughs> was, yeah, I've seen Sam a bunch, and like the craziest part for me was like, okay, I, I'm about to go on stage. The last thing I'm thinking about about at that point in time is like who is the who's the celebrity host, and when I finish, I look over and it's Sam there. And the crazy part is, is Sam and I have this like mutual friend. He's uh, Jim Gaffigan's uh, manager. Oh wow! And uh, and he's also a he's also a comedian. And I saw Sam after a show up here, and I was like, "Yo, dude, we got a mutual friend." Uh, Matt told me to say hi to you next time i saw you and sam broke out his phone took a selfie and sent it to him whoa and so like we had that moment like about two years before and so when i turned over and it's like the one comedian that like i've like hi you know spoken with sent a selfie with and he sent it to me too i was like oh this is weird yeah i like, noticed you had said that it was guy. nice to see you again sam i noticed that Good yeah moment. i was gonna like, ask oh, you about that you. Huh. I mean, Jim Gaffigan's the top five comedian all time for me. I don't. I love Jim Gaffigan. Yeah, everybody I think does. he's a little corny, but I like him. I think that just goes back oh. to that nod, man. I think that, and that makes me think of it differently. Like, they were just fucking with you on stage, but there's no hard feelings about that. I guess. Yeah, you're. No. It's hard for there not to be for some dummies, though. And speaking of Sam, uh, you said you're from Aspen, and they immediately made fun of you. But you, not even trying to make fun of them back, just go, "Oh yeah, I saw you there." You just yeah. go, oh, yeah, I saw you there, Sam. And they're making fun of doing comedy in Aspen. Yeah, you did and, it there, yeah. Yeah, I, felt, I really felt like you got the better of them, like, at every turn. And that probably dr well, drove him crazy. Well, I that, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was, it was just, like, a good, like, I was super excited and grateful to be there. So I wasn't ever going to let anything outshine that. Because so uh, many people, they get ashamed when they've been doing comedy. And they're, oh, you've been doing comedy for that long? You should be ashamed. I felt no shame with you because you shouldn't be ashamed, man. You had a couple funny jokes. Oh. And three and a half years isn't even that long. You're right. Yeah. Dude, I, I fucking just stoked that's off the fucking bucket list, honestly, yeah. dude. And I think Theo Vaughn says it best when he was having an interview with uh with Tony. Uh, like, I think it was on uh, Theo's podcast. Uh, he was like, dude, that minute shit, that shit's wild. That's hard to do, and, I bet. Yeah. And I, and I mean, it's, it, it's not, it's hard. It's not hard. It's all about you got to plan. Just like Mike Tyson said, you know, it's like, Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yep. Yeah. And and like having your name 
pulled the first time, you'll never have another one of those. Like that's the best that I've heard. I heard somebody say that is like, you'll never get pulled your first time for kill Tony twice. Like it is a, it's like definitely that experience of like, you got to plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> and you're like, well, we we and definitely you're like, hope you get right. back on there. Cause it's, you had a good interview and unfortunately we're kind of running out of time. Guys, oh yeah, we, man. Do you guys have a zoom? Before, so yeah, we, we don't pay for zoom. We have 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, we're, yeah, before we go though, dude, yeah, I gotta yeah. ask, uh, I don't. So, uh, Okay, who's in the uh, green shirt? What is? Oh no, that's what's me. your what's what's your name, brother? Jack. Jack, dude. Okay, I was watching y'all's clips the other day, and <laughs> you said some shit that is like, I'm gonna ask if it's okay if I can either steal this premise, or you oh, should start wow. doing stand, or you should start doing stand up because you already got a fucking really awesome premise. When you were talking about that Oculus porn shit, oh like, yes, yes, dude, and. Uh, because that shit is a whole, that's a great premise of like where all, masturbation dude. is gonna go. I love that like, clip too, Jack. I love that clip. It was hilarious. It made me laugh out loud. Someone definitely. just staring at me. Everyone I know is is behind the Oculus just staring at me. Yeah, I, I definitely write notes in my phone to aspire <laughs> one day to maybe. He write does have notes. aspirations. Well, dude. Hey, you I'll link up with you. Me? I'll link up with you on Instagram and I'll just send you all my premises. You can have them all. I'm, I'm too scared. <laughs> Ghostwriter. I'll send you money, man. Uh, but like, honestly, dude, uh, it was just the sheer fact that like, if I'm doing that act, I want to be on high alert. Exactly. Like, 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 Seriously. Like, and not have like something completely sensory deprivation. <laughs> yeah, something about like, that premise does make everyone instantly burst out with laughter. So yeah, good go call. Ahead, call. Yeah, I like the one where Thank it's you, like, dude. yeah, I don't do. Oc- you can even do the I don't do Oculus porn because uh, it's too the stuff I watch is too niche. That made me laugh. Oh yeah, and then I had what do you think about my niece call, tagline, huh? My niece tagline was pretty strong. <laughs> you got niece stuff or niche stuff? So cool. I appreciate the green light on that. And uh, and then the other thing I wanted to toss out there, if you guys do prank calls again, just prank call an expensive restaurant in Aspen and just act like you're a rich person with the most extravagant request oh my gosh. of all time. Let's do it until tonight. Until they figure it out. Until oh, they figure it out. Okay. Like, because it won't hurt anybody. You could just start asking for more and more wild shit. Like, can you get me a flamingo? Like, I want some flamingos there. And like, can you just act like oh. you want to rent out the restaurant and just say the most wild shit you can think of? I want That's those flamingos indeed. fed shrimp 45 minutes before I arrive so they're at their pinkest. <laughs> yes, they need to be at their absolute <laughs> pinkest. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious Anything too, man. Anything you can think of. And that will be like a normal request for like what the folks around here actually have. So like, go for it, dude, until they okay. actually are like, okay, I'm getting pranked. Great idea. I think we might do that tonight or next week. That, that yeah, some fantastic. lady at the restaurant's like, I actually know a cousin who has a zoo. There's a flamingo. We might be able to get the flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Because they'll stay on the phone for a while. If you say, if especially if you drop like, uh, yeah, it's going to be me and my colleagues from like make up a fancy sound and fucking business or something that sounds techie or some shit like that. Earnhardt and, and dude, Wilds. And that's a good idea because we do this so kind of late, but Aspen we'll be in the perfect time zone, I think for a yeah, prank dude. call. So thank you so much, sir. That's I had a good to toss idea. that out there to you guys, dude, yeah. because like, it'll be fucking hilarious. Yeah. And I'm sure some people, I'm sure some people would love to watch that. <laughs> and, and we got 60 seconds left. So any big shows right. that you want to plug or anything like that? Oh man. Yeah. I'm just constantly performing in the Roaring Fork Valley where I live. I've done like, I got, I've got five shows in the book since I got back. I got three shows next week. Uh, if you just, you know, I'll be luckily the people sell these shows out for us. So, awesome. uh, but wow. I'll be at unravel and Aspen, tiny pines and Carbondale and the collective and snow mass, man. It's a, uh, always a good time. Hey, taking advantage of that trickle down economy. Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Thanks Miller for coming, Ford. You Miller Ford. Oh, you guys are, are awesome, man. Keep rocking, and I hope to run into you sometime. Hell yeah, oh, yeah. dude. Take yeah. care. See you, man. All right, boys. Later. That was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. He's a cool dude. Yeah, I had a great time with that. That was really good. We got to ask about the owls. That's all I cared about. Yes. It's the owls. Jack, you crushed that interview. Very good stuff. Very Jack. funny, man. Jack, it's time to get up on that stage. 